I recorded it all, so you can listen to it. Um, it'd be hard to be like this. <laughs> this is what you missed. But um, something I was talking about with uh, him is that, uh, and I think him too, and her probably. No matter what we're thinking about, no matter what we're looking at, no matter what we're contemplating, no matter what thought we have, it's always us we're thinking about. So we're quite selfish. <laughs> you know, like I look at that tree, I'm like, oh, that tree is beautiful. It's, it's me. I'm just admiring myself in another way, you know? And um, I started thinking about language and how we have different words for things, but in reality, it's all me still. So I, I want to, like, for a, a couple days, just say one word, or at least words that mean the same thing, like God. So, like, when you say something to me, did you, do, did you take out the trash? God. And that could be yes or no. <laughs> That's up to you to decide. <laughs> And then I can say, like, Yahweh, or Tetragrammaton, or, or uh, Krishna, or whatever, and just only only have that one word come out of me, and, and only contemplate that one thing. Just an idea I was having. Um, I wanted to ask you a question, because I'm kind of shooting in the dark when I try to heal her with my energy, and I project myself into her with love, and warmth comes to my hands and to my whole body, and I become more energetic and hungry. I always get really hungry afterward. Um, and one time you got sick. One time I was trying to pull all of her sickness out of her and into myself, <clears throat> and I tried to like shoot it out my back while I was doing it, but it didn't work, and I threw up for like three hours. I was violently ill, and I was fine before. And But she felt better than she had in five years. So I'm trying to understand what's going on within myself that's happening, you know, what, what's, what's making this happen, and how can I help her more? How can I alleviate more pain from her? How can I help her alleviate more pain from herself? I mean, at this point, I'm trying to work with him. But I'm easily distracted, either by the pain or anything. You know, it's hard for me to not think. You know, but just receive. You know, and even give back. But um, I think my big problem now is I'm become dependent on him more than I have the doctors. You know, when I get really, really bad, I call him to come in <coughs> and help me. And it, it's amazing. Sometimes it's spontaneous. Sometimes the pain just goes away. You know, I mean, it comes back. <laughs> you know, it can't, I can't seem to kick it out the door. But, you know, and now, now he's trying to make me understand that it's, I can do it myself, you know, but now I'm believing in him, but I'm not believing in myself, you know, that, that, you know, I don't need him necessarily to be here to do what he does to make it so that I can bear what I'm dealing with, so, because I'm on a lot of medicine and, uh, I want to get off of this medicine really badly, and so now we're, I don't know whether you told him, mm -hmm. I have a pump uh, uh, inside me, and it's pumping morphine. They're going to take that out this month and put in poison snail venom, <laughs> which is all natural, and is supposed to be, you know, strong enough to make it so that I can move around more, so that I, which means I can use my muscles more, I can, you know, and I would be off morphine altogether, and it's not addictive, so. Nor does it cloud your, like, thinking. 
Huh. It doesn't like add cloudiness to your, your right. thoughts. It right. Make you now I will be on <coughs> phenylalanine, which is stronger than morphine. It'll be a patch <coughs> because they have to start at a really, really low dose of this snail venom and work it up. And as soon as they get that at the level, then I can get off of the narcotics, which is what my real goal is. And then we'll see what happens after that, <laughs> you know. But with, before I came to live with him, it was never about healing, it was survival, you know, and dealing with a lot of stress. So, here, you walk in here and you feel positive energy, you don't feel the stress, you know, and of course we snap at each other every once in a while, but, you know, it's, it's just like a good home, you know, a good, healthy, warm home with a lot of love. So, you know, and he did that for me. He drove all the way to Colorado by himself in a truck. <laughs> oh no, in a, in a van. In a van, in a van. And um, moved as much of my stuff as he could and then drove me all the way back. What, the next day, right? Yeah, I didn't sleep for 38 hours. So I was yeah. out. Uh -oh. I can't drive. So I tried to stay awake so that he wouldn't fall asleep. But that's hard with my medication, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, my medication is, makes me want to sleep, so that was hard. But anyway, I'm here and, you know, met beautiful Amanda. And Red's been my friend for a long time. He used to come to my house, yeah. And I've been at your house since I was a kid. Yeah, you know, and all of them, yeah. <laughs> All of them. Yeah, you know what I mean. I got all the way around the circle, and then all of a sudden I was like, who are you? <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you. What should I call you, actually? Mom. Mom? Yeah, yeah. it is. Okay. It's what everybody else calls me, so. Yeah. <coughs> Unless they're mad at me, and then they don't have me. <laughs> <laughs> Nice to meet you, Mom. And you're Tom? Yes. Tom and Mom. There you go. Me and Tom. So tell me about yourself. I mean, are you living now in this state permanently? Yeah, I have been in this country for more than 30 years. Wow. I go, I go back and forth, and I am going back to India again in a few weeks. You still have family there? Uh, in a sense, yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, not uh, any kind of children are married in all that sense. Right. Otherwise, they are there. Mm -hmm. And uh, life is quite uh, sweet and joyful here and there, both places. And uh, I am happy to be sitting with you and with him and with all these young people with such light and joyful and loving energy. I would say for your, <clears throat> a little bit your physical pain, if it suits you, you can try three days, mustard oil. He can help you where to get mustard oil from some Indian shop. And yes. you can maybe put a little bit, uh, a few, what you call garlics, mm -hmm. and uh, warm them up or boil them up in that oil. And then either she can use her with her own hands, wherever a little bit, uh, there is stiffness or all that, or somebody can put, so that will be, I think, quite a good thing. Okay. Yeah. The way her nerve pain yeah. works, though, the way her nerve pain works, that it, it, a lot of touching okay. hurts a lot. So okay. massage is hard. For her. Yeah, but gentle, gentle kind of. If it, she will find out within a couple of days whether it suits her or not, and basically it should, it should suit her. And uh, you can. Always sing for her for soothing and healing, and a little bit sometimes shoulder massage or foot massage. Anything works with touching and loving and sweet energy. 
and uh, I think both of you are blessed to have each other. I mean, in India, we are taught that those children who serve their parents, parents and especially mother, is the representative of God, because we all come to the mother. So if we show our gratitude and love and dedication to mother, then we are recognizing God, how God gave us this human birth and how we can be uh, grateful and respectful to God in the form of our parents. So it is the source of uh, direct grace and connection. And for a mother to have such a loving child is itself the greatest the boon and joy and blessedness to have such a child in her life. So you are both lucky for that reason. And, uh, and if you want to share something, feel free. If you want to ask something, feel free. <coughs> Otherwise, if you would like me, I will share for something for 10-20 minutes or whatever your gig is. I was very much on by his interest. So when I was visiting with him, I told him there is a young fellow and who somehow moved me enough that I would like to visit with him. And so he brought me here happily and I am very happy that I could visit with you all. So now whatever your calling is, please share your heart. Oh. A quick question about energy healing in particular. Like uh, I was wondering, especially in this case, if it would be beneficial if you're familiar with this technique to actually use um, crystals to actually amplify the energy that like Ryan's able to project like into his mother. Um, like, can you just comment on that? Like, are you familiar with like using crystals to like amplify energy or anything like that? Not much, not no. any more directly, but I have had many friends who were very much into crystal energy and they were very good at it and I very much support it. Mm -hmm. And if uh, you or he can do, I have very much uh, appreciation for that. Yeah, personally, like, I don't have expertise in the area or anything like that, but, like, uh, it just seems to me to make intuitive sense that, you know, if, like, your mother's condition is severe as it seems, like, and, like, there is, like, uh, an ongoing sickness, like, you benefit a lot from, like, using crystals to, like, just be able to focus more mm -hmm. and be able to, like, really direct the energy properly. Do you foresee any problem with, like, I don't, I don't know if this is possible, but, like, actually putting too much energy into her body? Like, if that, if that was the case? Not really. <coughs> not really. I am not so much in that sense. Uh, I mean, what he shared that he wanted to um, take away all her sickness and somehow he became himself sick. Sometimes such things yeah. are heard in history. Even there is a very famous story in India. There was an emperor mm -hmm. and he had only child. And... Uh, when he was told by the physicians that the only child would not uh, live, die. So the emperor prayed as sincerely as he could that, Dear Lord, I want my life to be given to my child. And uh, if death has to come, then I am open to die for his sake. And uh, because it is natural also, father is older and son is younger and he was the only child. And then it happened and somehow miraculously that Boa was saved and the emperor died. And so we have such a um, rather proofs in history that these things do sometimes take place. It depends how much we are connected in that fashion. Right. So that is quite uh, also critical how much connection is there. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, we should be detached also. Everyone is supposed to go through their own whatever life experiences and karmas. So it is not that uh, we can do beyond a certain limit. And we can only be there to support, to be there for him or her, but without so much uh, wondering that I have to take away her pain so I can put in my body and all that. I mean, as long as she knows I am there for her, that is quite enough. That is how I Exactly. Feel. I mean, I feel like, first of all, he made me far more aware of my life and what's around me and everything. You know, he opened my eyes. 
because I spent a great deal of time being a victim. And I didn't want to be a victim, and I didn't even know I was being a victim until, you know, he made me realize that, that I mean, he didn't, those words weren't used, but I was so caught up in all my losses, my home, mm -hmm. my, you know, suddenly I went from a mother with four kids to being uh, away in Colorado with one of my kids um, who is not, is the total opposite of him. He's full of stress and anger and uh, it just wasn't a good situation. And what he has done for me is taken me out of that situation and not, you know, he doesn't always come in and try to heal by, you know, putting, it's a lot of talking, a lot of communication, a lot of, like he has me listen to things that I didn't know existed. And, I mean, I'm not a stupid woman, and I certainly have, I don't know whether I'm well read, but I'm, I'm certainly, you know, spent a great deal of my time reading and discovering and, you know, but he's pointed me in a direction that's helping me, both physically and mentally. And so that's the difference, you know, instead of reading things that are good to read. I mean, it's not junk, but I'm now reading things that are good for everyone I come in contact with, not just for me. This isn't about just me, you know. The only, and the only reason why I even sat down and started right away into this was because he, he indicated to me that we were kind of time limited. And I, I didn't know how soon you were going to leave. So I really wanted to talk to you about, you know, what Ryan, you know, I don't want him to get hurt by trying to help me, you know. I mean, I'd give my life for him, but I certainly don't want him to give his life for me. You know, I understand. Parents should never have to see right. the death of a child. Right. I, I don't care how old they are. You know, right. we're supposed to go before they go. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, no matter what. So that's that's why I brought it up. No, that's beautiful, and. Uh, since you all have showed up, I don't know what brought you here, so if you could put in plain simple words, I will know uh, if I have anything to share regarding your presence or your question or anything, because you three are new, we all have already been interacting with each other, so feel free, all of you. And now don't, don't focus on her anymore, she is there as a witness, you are dealing with me. You don't have to deal with her anymore. Okay. I am very director and that has been my boon and curse both and that is how it is. Okay, well, uh, I have a few general questions about like the chakra system within the body. And the I would deal with those. that. I would say to be in touch with yourself. What do you want and why do you want what you want? Don't allow your mind to take you here and there. Yeah. All these questions that most of us spiritual seekers have generally are based on book learning or hearing. As a spiritual seeker and teacher, I emphasize, let your question arise from your own gut experience. What it is you are seeking, what it is you are asking, not what you have read or heard. So go within yourself and then I am here and see what you want. And I would say, most of us, we don't know what we want with all our education and university degrees. And mm -hmm. even if we become old and die and all that, it is a very big question to know what I want. And those of us who figure out what they want or what we want, they somehow are blessed to be fulfilled in their want. So take a few minutes while I will be hearing from them and uh, let your fire come from your own experience, your own confusion or your own wisdom. 
and then I will see how, if anything, I have got to share. And you, sir? Um, I, I want nothing, and I have no question, and I seek only to be inspired and to be, um, uh, and to exchange energy and love. Beautiful. Beautiful. Are they staring at you, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to know if there are any... Um... When you want me to ask, you are looking there. Look towards me, so that your eyes are speaking to me, not only your lips. This is also a powerful, powerful way of communicating. When you are asking someone, you go directly to his or her eyes. Yes. I understand. Um, how, are there any exercises for strengthening your intuition? Oh, many, many exercises are there. And I would say the number one exercise that has helped me is learning to be truthful. The more you are truthful, First, by keeping your word. Second, by keeping your own conviction. Like if you decide tomorrow you will get up at 6 or 7, then don't fool around that, oh, no, no, I can get up at 8.30 or 8 or 9. I must get up because I decided so. So whatever we decide, we should be somehow gradually cultivate that willpower that we carry it out. And once you do that, then all intuitions that you can think of are given to you. And you end up realizing your core of being. I am going to share a couplet by one of the greatest mystics of India. And uh, he is sharing through this couplet. I will first repeat his own words. Sanch barabar tap nahi, jhoot barabar paap, jake hirday sanch hai, its meaning is there is no austerity higher and greater than truthfulness and there is no wickedness there is no what you call evil or badness worse than lying and then he goes further those who have been able to nurture truth in their heart God automatically resides in their heart. So to whatever extent you have learned to be truthful, or you are aspiring to be truthful, to that very extent, God is nothing else but that truth in a very abstract form. God starts manifesting divine grace in your life, in anyone's life. I will share some couple of sweet stories for you, to inspire you, since he mentioned the word inspiration. I have been a humble seeker of uh, truth, I should say. So once for some reason, my teacher, whom we call Guruji, had left ashram, where we several disciples were staying. Somehow he was in that mindset, he would never come back. Then the whole story, he was not mad with any one of us, but some other factor was there, and that was not part of the story. So when my brother disciple came back after he was asked by my teacher, you go back and now I will return when I feel like returning. And when he told me I was the oldest among all disciples, I could see that he would not be coming back and it was very painful and hurtful. So I asked <laughs> where he left him, so he told me. So I went to that town. When I went to that place, they told me he left yesterday. Then when I went to other place, they told he left one hour before. And he was talking about that place. So when I went into that direction, it was a jungle kind of place. So I got lost. So I saw a rock there and I sat down on that rock. And according to my conditioning, I said, now I'm lost. So what can I do? I can only pray. So I closed my eyes and started praying to God in whatever way. God, bring me light, Give, tell me the direction, and I am in search of my Guru. And so when I opened my eyes, I saw a rabbit 
running from one direction and going into another direction. So according to my culture and conditioning, I followed that rabbit. Rabbit ran away, but I kept in that direction and after a mile in that direction, I found my Guruji washing his hands after finishing his meal. And when he looked at me, he said, wow, how, how did you find me here? <laughs> and I remember those words. I said, you think you are the only smart guy? <laughs> and then, of course, uh, he just came right away sweetly. And so that was one simple proof to inspire. Second, I went another story. I was uh, in India and for some reason, some in the middle of the night, I was returning from my cave and I was visiting some other fellow in the town and there was no telephone system or in his house or in, with my pocket. So I ended up knocking at the door in the middle of the night and he was not there and my stomach was churning. So I said, here I have great problem and there is no such facility of bathroom <laughs> here and there. And there was no choice, so I had, for the moment, I had to sit by the roadside somewhere. So I made myself comfortable, when I became a little comfortable, then I thought, what to do? It is a very critical thing. And no paper, nothing like that, no training, or I don't know whether I had come to America or not. So, but still I remember God again. And God comes at odd times. And now since it is for me a critical thing, kind of uh, awkward situation, so I am not going to feel shy in praying to God, and if God wants to show some miracle, I am open. So I took a couple of deep breaths and said, oh God, you are always almighty and do some crazy things, and I, and after a couple of moments, when again became alert, I saw on the other side of the road, somebody with a big huge bucket of water doing the same holy business, and then I shouted from this side, oh, <laughs> save half water for me, don't worry, don't worry, I have plenty of water. And so, that was a very simple test. And I was very grateful to God that even at bathroom time, you are always alert and take care of me. And third interesting story that was, in a sense, the most moving story, it happened in America here. I was returning from California in my car and my car was very much uh, what you call wobbling and shaking and I did not notice. So somebody hung from behind me and then when I became alert, the person indicated towards my, uh, what you call Tire. it, uh, tires and I could remember oh, that my something is wrong with my tire and I am somehow goofing off. So I took the next exit. And to my surprise, the person who hung at me, he also took the same exit. Where I stopped, he also stopped. And he looked at me and he said, do you have wrench and all that? I said, uh, yes, yes, yes. And then before I could see, he opened uh, whatever and that's, there was an extra tire there. And he said, you wait here and uh, I am coming back after getting it fixed. He took the tire he, and got my tire fixed came back, put it back, and then before I said the address and I said, just bless me and that's all. Oh. And I did not know that man. <laughs> and even in, in India, I could never have expected a stranger will come and honk and then take my tire to get it fixed and put it back in my uh, car and all that. So God is always it comes if you have that kind of openness. And then you build that trust that no matter where I go, divine grace will be always there. So it is through, through truthfulness. You keep on practicing truthfulness more and more and you always get proof more and more. And I was telling even my friend that in America, though America is the richest country, but it's still much more sissy. I was telling that we come from India where we had so little, but the culture is such. The training is such, the encouragement is such that people take a chance uh, and risk their life in the name of God. Here you don't take a chance. If you take, take a chance, sometimes you are put in mental asylums or here and there and becomes a much critical case here. But uh, if some of you do, you will find God is always everywhere. It depends how pure you are, how daring you are and how willing you are to face the challenges and if you keep on facing the challenges 
so far he he or she or it has never failed me and i hope he or she or it will never fail any one of us it depends how truthful you are truthful not only in keeping words truthful in your actions in your discipline in your meditation in your yoga in your music in your relationship in all spheres of life be truthful be truthful be truthful and when you practice that kind of truthfulness then you somehow become convinced that my god that truth is always surrounding me i came from that truth i live in that truth and i will be finished in that truth and that is what life is for how to realize that truth through music through meditation through selfless service through occupying i saw a lot of interest through your words that you are for occupying i am also very much comfort for occupying I have been going to for picketing and all that and all that in South Carolina, and now I am going to India. And God knows, I was telling him, I don't know what is my destiny in India. Picketing in America is much more different than it will be different in India when I will be there. But whatever will be, will be. This body has come into the shape, and it will find its way to get out of the shape. So when you become really fearless, it is all divine. play divine day to divine celebration so please again ask and again ask i always uh, when i was a young boy maybe not quite still so young but still 16 17 year old i used to bike 3 miles early in the morning at 3 or 4 in the morning because uh, in those days some special swami or a learned man or a learned guru will show up and he will give me 5 minutes time to give me some answers and because my fire to know was so strong i would be getting up early in the morning and i would bike in the bitter cold so that i could get some answer for a few minutes from him so i am very much somehow sensitive to anyone's questions not that i would be able to satisfy him or her but at least i will be <coughs> open to hear so feel free whatever you may want to ask whether i could give right answer or not at least i will give you the joy of being heard thank you and now what is your question sir well it's based on an experience that i had um earlier this year where i actually uh, ended up in the mental hospital after a very very intense uh, psychedelic experience and then a subsequent week being really just way out there and um the fundamental difficulty I'm having like in dealing with the experience is that I was I was very open I was extremely opened up like during the experience but I feel like I was in such a state that like I became susceptible to like very negative things and a lot of very negative energy was flowing through me and so I'd like you to like perhaps comment on like um the nature of like negativity like coming from outside the self or perhaps like um like how one can like take something like that like an extremely negative force and transmute it into something that is that is positive or to find the light in the darkness for example um one of the visions that i was having like during this experience and that continued afterwards was like the vision of like being completely wrapped up in like uh, a hurricane and this hurricane was extremely fierce and extremely powerful but it was it was completely vicious there was nothing really benign about it like um it's almost like it was like the the instead of like having wind like on the side of the hurricane it was like made out of teeth and it was just completely fierce completely ready to devour everything you know and i also had the um like visions of like being being just like of the void just being completely void and empty and like this led me into a completely black space where I actually ended up doing uh, some pretty bad things with a few people you know <clears throat> i just like for you to perhaps comment on that and if you'd like to ask me a question about it to clarify your understanding of the situation please do <clears throat> i would say we do all change according mm-hmm. to our contacts and association yeah that is why i remember in my early days the number one teaching i got from my elders was always see good association 
don't mix with the negative association. We did not quite understand why it was presented like that, but now I can understand. In our early days, mm -hmm. it is very difficult to decide what I can pick from someone or not pick from someone. We get sucked into each other and then we end up behaving like the other person somehow is transmit certain energies or certain inspirations in us. So it is very, very important, I would say, to the extent we have our common sense that we should associate only with good-hearted people. We should never overestimate our power. Now I know after being so old that even if I have some negative kind of something, I may still get sucked into that to some extent. So, from the very start, I should avoid that negative touch, if I can avoid. Yeah. So, I would say very much, uh, again, same thing, respect your own common sense, respect light within you, like Buddha always used to teach your own lamp of light, respect that. And the more you respect your own lamp of light, the more you find that it is uncaused, it is eternal and it is like a, leads you to nirvana. Yeah. So I would say since you have been, since you have gone to that extent to the mental uh, asylum or whatever those kind of extreme cases that should give you a lot of uh, fearlessness also because those of us who sometimes uh, go to those extreme conditions, they lose fear. I have already seen that. There is nothing not such a big deal, I can get out of it. So like those people who have been once or twice to prison, they know oh, it's not a big deal, I have been there. So it is like that, so now you have already seen that uh, situation and now put yourself into what, to whatever extent you can know according to your own experience what is positive and what is not positive. And the more you have those kind of uh, that kind of food, even food is also very critical. I don't know, like in this country, everywhere now in India too, people eat meat without least thinking. But I would say those of us who are more sensitive, you should make an experiment for 10 days, I am not going to eat meat, just to see how my body and mind reacts not for not eating meat. And those things, sir, if you catch a either too much drugs or too much drinking or meat are not positive, then you automatically start taking measures to be out of that kind of habit. So mm -hmm. I would say even right kind of friends, right kind of books, right kind of videos, right kind of food, right kind of discipline, like when to go to bed and when to wake up and when to do exercise, simple things. They look very simple, but they be somehow become part of our whole psyche. So I would say, if you use your common sense in all those areas, you will not be any more affected with negativity and you will be able to protect yourself from those influences and you will also avoid those negative influences. Why should I go to a casino if I don't want to play? If I have a, if I am going to watch after watching some time, I will start playing. In India, we used to do that when children. People will play gambling and we will first go to watch it, seeing it. Then we can put one or two pennies here and there. And then we get a kick, oh, I got a little more and this. And then we start really playing that. So we were taught, don't, don't go to see the excitement of gambling. Because when we start watching the excitement, gambling, then you start a little bit playing that and then you get sucked into that. So all these simple things uh, help us a lot and I don't know if I lost your question otherwise repeat again, I will try again. No, I believe that was a, a pretty satisfactory answer. Okay, then. thank you and just uh, build your trust in your own being, in your own light. You will never find uh, any higher light anywhere that is not already within you. You will never find any light higher than your own light that is already within you. What happens that if I see a great light, oh, Buddha, Jesus, Krishna, and this is sun and all that, who is not seeing that? The light that is already within me is not seeing that. So for me to say, oh, that is a great light. This light that is recognizing the greatness of that light, 
can it be said any inferior to that light? So the light within you always holds the highest place. So God within you will be always in the top place. So when we learn to respect God within us, then somehow we start living from that place of conviction, from that place of humbleness as well. Because same God is living through each one of us. Like same mind sees through my eyes, hears through my ears, smells through my nostrils, and feels, enjoys taste through my tongue. Same mind. So same God is living through all of us. Like same mind in the dream, all characters live all the roles, play all the roles in the dream. So gradually, the more we live a truthful life and a sweet life and kind life and caring life, the more we automatically feel everyone is just divine expression and I am one of them. So you never feel excluded, you never feel puffed up in your ego, neither you feel inferior, you just feel divine, <coughs> connected and happy. Thank you. Yes, thank you. You did I respond to your question, sir? Or if you can want to share again, feel free. Because I came here just for that region to hear and to talk and to be with him. <coughs> so I don't have Oh, very good, very good. So from my side, I will say a couple of things more. Unless and until you have a special energy or repulsion. I would say have an altar, altar, put in that altar some candle or some holy picture of any god or any goddess or any deity or if nothing else a flower and burn one incense or light candle for two minutes every day. That association for if you do that discipline for 10 days. When you are driving your car, automatically sometimes thought will come, Oh my altar, how the candle was lit up or how the incense was giving fragrance and how the that lotus was blossoming and how the Buddha was smiling. Those associations start building up on their own. Once you see the power of those associations, then automatically you are more drawn. Automatically you are more inspired and empowered. So I would say you can make experiment for 10 days, it will take only a minute or two, that one experiment. Second I will say have connection with light sun, whenever you remember that the sun is there, have couple of seconds eye contact with the sun, don't hurt your eyes, but welcome sun, as if God, God is shining divine grace through the rays of the sun, so you are receiving. If you are not shy, you can do that also, but if you are shy, because most of us are most of the time very shy. If I do like that, oh, what others will, if anybody seeing, or oh, what am I doing, and I am crazy. So we don't want to look crazy. It takes quite a lot of strength not to fear to appear crazy. So, but when you do that, at least two, ten days, I have been convinced that any discipline that you try, whether it works for you or not, don't try two, three days. Have patience to try for 10 days. So 10 days have eye contact with sun. And if you start uh, automatically feeling the power of uh, sun without any reason, then you know there is some special power and then you automatically will connect and automatically will be more and more empowered. So that is one thing about having an altar and then the connection with the sun and then the third thing I had again something in mind but it is not coming in the moment for whatever reason when it will come I will share that also it is also very something very simple because simple things are much more fundamental don't go so much into abstract many abstract ideas are only for outsmarting each other I can reason better I can outsmart better and I can impress more but that is only for ego purpose where our heart is concerned it is only very simple basic things so I would like you very much eh, to keep your life very simple and then you are very very blessed just for this reason you have an inclination for music I consider personally 
that those of us who are for some reason drawn to music, it is the glory of their past karma that they have been gifted with the special taste, special inclination, special connection with music. Because if you do just music, every Sometimes if you cannot do, don't do, otherwise you should do that every single day. Not music for just your ear. <coughs> you are singing the glories of the Lord. It's, it's a thought, but if you bring that thought, I am singing the glories of the Lord. I am drumming for the Lord. <coughs> I am dancing for the Lord. So then you feel your singing has become spiritual. Your music has become spiritual. And I think uh, since you all are lucky to be blessed with the inclination of music, you can saturate your being with the rapture of music much, much more. And then when you exude that rapture, not only music, there is one aspect, you can be a great musician sometimes and you may not have the rapture. And sometimes you may have the rapture and you may not have the great music. Sometimes you may have both. So. Since to whatever extent you are blessed with having the talent of music, bring the rapture of being in touch with that divine music or having that connection with the Lord. And then you will feel much more inspired and whenever you spend time in music, feel very proud of yourself that I am investing my life for the highest cause. You see, the whole, this humanitarian uh, mess that has been created now all over the world, it is because the music has been neglected. In this country, since uh, I have been so many years, there is no place, public place that we can freely sing and dance and create music. No, you cannot be, you cannot be here, here after 8 p.m. or 7 p.m. or 9 p.m. and there are no places we can sing and dance and all that. So we are only, have only computer and we have these televisions and this crazy program, so our mind is being polluted. And we are not getting in touch with our original music, original divine creativity. So I would say since uh, mom is so kind and we have this big room, always make sure that you all come here and sing some divine music and put some divine picture of Jesus, Moses, Buddha, Krishna or Lotus somewhere. Otherwise mama is here in the name of the Lord. So and then create that music and be absorbed in your music. Go beyond body consciousness and it is possible and it does not, you don't have to be a number one musician to be immersed in music. There was a great musician in India, Meera Bai and she was a queen but she used to sing and dance on the lanes, on the streets because she became intoxicated. She lost body consciousness. So the purpose of all spiritual discipline is like she was self-conscious about singing so I somehow pushed her. And I told my own story about how I was dancing in rainbow gatherings and all that. So always go extra mile to be fearless, to become free of shyness, to become free of any kind of hatred. And just keep on being yourself. So now I will welcome a couple of questions you have. Uh, yes, sir. Um, was the third thing, <clears throat> was the third thing that you used? Wanted to suggest, because um, you already suggested it was the fast or uh, the, the vegetarian, not eating meat. Was that the third thing? I think third thing was in the course of talking, it was music itself. Mm. That make yourself available to music in the spirit of divine pursuit. That it is my connection to God, it is my offering to the Lord who gave me this body, who gave me this mind, who gave me this talent. I am expressing my gratitude by singing or by playing or by creating music. So that was the third thing. But uh, you can put any three things <laughs> and uh, you can really and expose yourself to those beings who are a little bit far out. Because when you get exposed to far out beings, not that they teach anything. You remember them. Oh my God, I met that woman or a man and he or she seemed crazy and far out. Far out one, they don't care what others think of them. When a person reaches that space that he or she has become free of others' judgment, it does not register in his or in her consciousness. You also want the same freedom in your being, 
So that triggers that aspect in you that if he or she can be like that, I can also be like that. So it is that glimpse of freedom that we experience from those high beings. So that is why we are supposed to go wherever anybody comes within our um, time zone that we can go and uh, experience his or her energy and that person's memory will start haunting you, igniting you, inspiring you, empowering you to bring that light, grace, freedom, ease. And the more we live through that ease, then the life automatically provides. I mean, what were you hunting or doing when you your mother's womb? You did not, you were not starving. See, in our head that we think, oh, I will starve, I will starve. We don't starve as long as we are supposed to be alive. Somehow somebody will, something will come to take care of your bod bodily needs. It is just that trust. So let us build that trust and uh, we will be always provided for. And as long as we share whatever we have, we will never lack anything. And never ever lack anything. I, I think that, um, were, were you finished? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Um, I think that the way that uh, we were speaking about earlier, the way that our society is structured, it keeps us fighting each other. And one thing I really liked in that Thrive movie was he said that we were both the wardens and the prisoners of each other. We keep each other in line, but then we're, we're, we're the victim of the, of the other person's uh, sanctions toward us. And um, it limits us and it stops us from doing and being and understanding what you're saying right now, you know, and it just fills with self, with self confidence or self, um, sorry, self um, consciousness. Consciousness. Well, what I was trying to say was like, we're fearful of what other people think. Right. You know what I mean? And it limits us. It stops us. It stops us from being as best as we can. And I know that there's got to be a better way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to try again and again and again and again. When I was a young boy, I had memorized a speech because my older brother was one of the greatest speakers in debates. But in spite of my memorizing word by word, when I saw the audience, somehow I got scared. So I ran away, not only once, a couple of times. But I was still a bit stubborn. So one day I just talked to myself, Shanji, at that time my name was something else. I said, unless you run away hundred times, I would not let you sit in rest. You run away hundred times, keep on noticing, and then you don't have to go anymore. So I got trapped in my own commitment and conviction and when I went for the third time to speak, I, I was staggering but then I became shameless and confident. So most of us are all chicken out. Don't chicken out. Now I have become so shameless that even if you have the best of the best, I don't know if I can feel little more this or that. You may be anything, but I am me. What is the big deal about you? So something gets opened up within your own system. You don't get least shaken up. Yes, sir? Um, can I play a song? Please. Oh, how blessed you are to be taken up, care of by all these angels. Yes. Wow. Well, sometimes I gotta kick them in the butt, but I'm um, <laughs> 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 being a redheaded stuff. It's a, it's a good, it's a good <laughs> kick in the butt. It's not a bad kick in the butt. You know how to like accept life and live life. Thank you, all my prayers and graces for you. Oh, I'm coming back. Okay. okay. I'm See? not going away. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready for Ryan. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Do you know uh, Alana Savoie? No, I just know one song, but I always forget the... I know Badfish, but I don't know how to say, put Badfish into it. <laughs> 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 
Because <laughs> after you're done, I want to sing something. Um, he was talking earlier about the music, and the song popped in my head, uh, By the Rivers of Babylon. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. So I definitely feel like singing that. Sure. I was hoping somebody maybe knew how to play that song. I approximately. It's really easy. Yeah, it's a pretty simple acoustic. Yeah, it's like two chords. I like your laugh. Oh, thank you. Do <laughs> you laugh? Well, I like to laugh. zones of music, our colors, our visions, our smells, are sometimes rings and drums and all that. So it is just enjoying and uh, listening out and to whatever extent you remain detached as well. Otherwise sometimes uh, when we are too much sucked into it, uh, then we don't go to a higher dimension. Higher dimension is a more than any particular experience. Anything that you experience, it comes in time and it fridges out in time. We can never experience as an experience anything that is permanent. The permanent thing is your light, your presence, your being, your background. And that is God within you, God within me, God within all of us. So, since we cannot catch God within us without first being exposed to these mystical experiences. So we all are given these mystical experiences to go higher and higher into our being. That is already beyond all experiences. So that is how I would say appreciate those experiences, be 
blissful with those experiences but don't get stuck and sucked into those experiences as they come so they will also fizzle out or you will go beyond them experiences are not so much important the real important thing we all all experiences is your knowing like you know you are here and when you will leave this room you will be somewhere else you will be still knowing i am here then you will be somewhere else you will be still knowing i am here so places and all experience a change but your knowing remains intact what your knowing has got to know to know that it is knowing what your knowing has got to know to know that it is knowing you don't your knowing does not need to know anything like my eyesight does not need to see anything special to be convinced they are it is working eyesight is working my power of hearing does not have to hear anything particular special song or music to be convinced there is power of hearing so your power of knowing is beyond all knowing your power of seeing is beyond all seeing so gradually we come to that beyond aspect am i making sense mm -hmm. so that is what the purpose is but we have to appreciate those experiences that come along the way and that is how we build our trust in the divine when we are exposed to higher dimension higher dimension means simple things we experience only through five senses when something we experience that is not available to five senses that we become ah 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 so that experience of ah ignites our faith and more dedication and more deeper pursuit and then we come to realize that knowing that does not have to know anything as long as there is desire to know something knowing is still not quite uh, available quite uh, transparent quite uh, obvious the knowing in you does not have to know anything the being in, in you does not have to become anything else oh Yeah, you can also shoot your question. Be shameless. Oh, I, I don't have a question. Okay. <coughs> you anything? Anyone have you, sir? Uh, just like um, a thought I had about what you're saying is that because um, we don't have to know or or be anything else, uh, it makes everything uh, a gift. Yes, it is. Wonderful. Wonderful. Everything is a gift. Our life is a gift. Our experience is gift. Everything is a gift, and that gift is also given by yourself, because your own self is God. My own self is God. God can, like your own mind, can become the whole realm of all characters in the dream, mountains and rivers and the star and moon and sun and robbers and. murderers and holy beings and angels in the dream world where do they come from from your own mind so god within us has that tremendous tremendous capacity so somehow we are trying to get in touch with that godliness within us and the more we are in touch with that godliness automatically we become more relaxed it is not that i have to do something to relax Yes. Do you think that if you transcend the fear of death and um and do you think if you transcend the fear of death would your experience of existence um wouldn't that wouldn't that exist forever? It's pre supposes as if experience of existence has a special kind of flavor when you go deep into this concept what is my experience of existence you will find the experience of existence is already quality less already colorless experience of existence is a pure be go into your own question and see when did i first time experience i exist do i not exist now 
what is the shape and color and weight and nationality and religion and uh, speciality of my existence? When you pose that question, you will find your existence is free of all these things that mind can imagine. That is why in our Indian metaphysics we are taught God has three basic uh, you can say qualities or characteristics very hard to define. One is Sat. Sat means existence. God just exists. Exists. God does not have that kind of uh, power or that kind of uh, freedom not to be. God has got to be. God is existing, existing, eternally existing. That is called Sat. Then there is another aspect of God that is called Chit. Chit means consciousness, awareness. God cannot deprive himself, herself, itself from awareness. So existence is always shining with awareness. Like, what are you doing to know that you know you are a human being? Okay. Just like that. As you are doing nothing to know you are existing or you are aware of whatever you are aware of, same thing applies to God. That is Chit. The third aspect of God is bliss. We think we need some outer, uh, outer what you call uh, instrument or outer factor to make us happy either through eyes for our visual excitement or through our tongue excitement or through our skin enticement. But God within you does not need any excitement. God is self-excited within itself, which is like sound sleep experience. When you wake up from the sound sleep, and if somebody asks you, did you have a good sleep, what do you say? Yes, I had a wonderful sleep. And then if somebody asks you, did you remember me, miss me, think of me? First, nobody asks this kind of silly question. <laughs> but if somebody dares to ask, you will say, sorry, I did not think of you or anybody. Then if the other person would ask, then how can you say you were happy, you had a wonderful time? If I was not present with you, if nothing was present. So that only proves that God within us does not need any excitement from outside. Because when you are in touch with yourself as in sound sleep state, you are self-entertaining, self-blissful, self-contained. So with all our pursuits of metaphysical kind or material kind, we all are trying to get into that soaks that I don't depend on anybody else or anything else. So we want pleasure joy as well as freedom. If my pleasure depends on you because you are a great musician or you are a great cook or you are a great massage therapist or you are a great singer, then I will be always depending on you for my kick. But if I do not depend on you or anything else for my kick, then what is my problem? I am self-contained. God within me is now manifesting freedom because I am no more seeking pleasure from outside. That is why spiritual pursuit is so important. It is not only giving you pleasure, it is also giving you freedom from any kind of dependence. And nobody likes to be dependent. You may love anything or anyone, but deep down you all want to be self-contained. And that is the quality, again, our characteristic of God, bliss. And we all have that bliss also. So a spiritual pursuit is to somehow get in touch with our inner bliss. And when we enjoy food or music or any other pleasure, we know it is the same God we are enjoying through sense organs or through other means. But deep down, it is nothing more. It is the same bliss. Did I satisfy you, sir, about existence? Yes. Thank you. So you seem to be quite a mystical creature. You have to keep <coughs> take care of your belly, make him your yoga teacher. Because the more your belly is under control, reduce your weight, the more your ex experience of existence will be more available to you. We lose the experience of existence whenever we have too much body weight, when we have too many crazy desires. Less we have burdens and desires and attachments and fears and fat in our body, the more our consciousness is available to know itself, to be itself, to celebrate itself. 
and you seem to be quite a far out being. So I hope you understand that and make best out of your existence. Thank you. Do you know what he calls himself? No, I don't know. Freedom. Wow! So, <laughs> you know what? I want to say... What? what? Freedom. Freedom. Wow. I want to say that I would love to be his yoga teacher, but I would. I need to learn yoga first. <laughs> right. I don't know, I don't know <laughs> enough. I would love to learn more. Get ready, we'll take you to India. <laughs> Please. Please. <laughs> he mentioned the first time I met him that in 2013 okay. it's the largest gathering we'll, of people. We'll feed you, we'll give you a place to live, learn, and do some service over there. I will and do Come back I and can. teach here for free. I will sweep the floor and <laughs> sleep on it. No, no, no. If you really see us, we'll yeah. do that for you. You see, okay. you guys have a place there. Yeah. In he got big, a big, big, huge room. ashram, and, uh, you know, the, and no, kind of setting, no, crowded, a lot of crowded food and all that. So. 50 million people are more. 50 million. Yeah. Yeah, yeah next year, uh, 13th January. Yeah, yeah. not this year, next year. Tw uh, 2013, yes. January. Big gathering, big, Largest huge. Largest gathering of human beings on this planet Earth. That yeah. will take place there. That is how it happens okay. every 12 years. Where so exactly is it? In his in India, uh, place. Ahabad, where, where is his ashram? Huge gathering. Okay. A lot of Westerns, at least Westerns, you know, American and European, at least 200,000. Wow. They will be gathering. I want, I, I want to come. I, I, so I, get ready. I, I, but I don't will. come for yoga for that. It is so much crowded, you will not have. No, not that time for yoga, but yoga. after that, right. he can right. stay. No, after the Mela, he can stay or before he right. can Right, right. You can yeah. hang out there at Manjika. It is a very cheap country. It is very easy to live there. Probably $2 a day, your lunch, dinner, breakfast, you will be happy. $2 wow. a day. Well, yeah. I have to secure some things in my life before I can do that, some responsibilities, but I... Learn, be more and more truthful. There is no responsibility except the illusion of responsibility. I don't have responsibility that I have to remember to go to pee and go to shit. It's just like that. And I continue to be responsible for my peeing and shitting. Just like that everything happens. It is except, except only the illusion of it that I am responsible. Do I say I am responsible for shitting and peeing and breathing? And yet I have never goofed off in breathing and peeing and shitting. <laughs> Just like that. It has been mentioned like that by all the great mystics. It is not an imagination, it is a real fact. Yes, sir. Hmm? I'm going to go ahead and sing. Um, by the rivers of Babylon, where he sat down, and there he went, when he remembered Zion. Oh, for the wicked carry us away, captivity required from us a song. How can we sing King Alpha's song in a strange land? So let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. Over I, by the rivers of Babylon, where he sat down, and there he went, when he remembered Zion. Oh, for the wicked carry us away, captivity require from us a song. How can we sing King Alpha's song in a strange land? How can we sing King Alpha's song in a strange land? Yeah, Paul. Yeah. 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 I've been singing since I was a kid. Oh, you are really Church very choir, Buddha within choir. you. My God, Buddha is quite alive in you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Oh. 
That's his name, Buddha, right? Buddha, <laughs> freedom. Yeah. Wow, no, these are divine crazy beings here. <laughs> if you only know. Well, Brian, you should change your name too. Liberty. You don't know how many people call me Jesus with the way I look. Wow. And I think it's probably because I'm like, Jesus looked nothing like me. <laughs> how about Liberty? <laughs> freedom and Liberty. <laughs> In, in, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you no. in, in India, how does it compare in terms of awareness and, I mean, do most people in India grow up with uh, those teachings or is it like here where there's, you know, you have to go seek it? No, it is much, much more available in India. That is why it is considered a little bit more far out in spiritual religious sense. Though there is a lot more dogma also and conditioning also, but still those teachings are very much available. And in India, when we grew up, there is no any money involved. We go to great teachers and speakers and we get to listen and there is and we are fed also many times and so somehow the culture and tradition is such that those who have extra money they take care of all those things yeah. and ordinary people are just exposed to those teachings and those kind of music and that kind of performance which is changing in India also now because now the television culture is, and internet culture is making us all quite intertwined or polluted in the same way but uh, it was quite available in India. And uh, the internet changed so yeah, much. In right, India. right, right. What's interesting about the internet is that no longer do I have to learn from my, my parents' mistakes or my like immediate friends' mistakes. I can learn from mistakes from everyone, and I can learn of inventions from everyone. You know, in the past, the communication level wasn't so high where we could learn about you know the inventions in another country, and then we can learn it here and do it here too. It, have that, that 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 knowledge base, and I, I see it um, as well as others of my friends who see it as a octave of the energy of God. It's that that flow of information, and it just gives and gives and gives. And sometimes it's polluted with the wrong information, you know, or not the wrong information, but untruthful, untruthful information that can't help. But it's still flowing and giving. It's connecting so many people. I mean, look what Occupy has done. I mean, it's in over 1,300 cities around the world. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's still not really talked about on the news. I know. But just, just the internet. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am absolutely, I think it is God's will that the revolution in a spiritual sense is taking place because of the power of the internet. Mm -hmm. Because now the mass media is not controlling the real heart-to-heart -heart information. We are able to connect to each other. Now they are trying to somehow dismantle or deprive us of, from all the facilities of Facebook and Internet. But if we are lucky and if we are awake enough, we will fight and we will not uh, let them somehow control us to their degree. So it is the best thing that has happened and is happening. And now I will use bathroom, then we will have combined a few minutes meditation or omic. Then we will be taking off, and it was a wonderful, very sweet and inspiring experience. And if you have any other stories to share or ask, I will be a few minutes more lingering with you. Otherwise, uh, Kumar has his own responsibilities, so we will be moving on. So feel free, and I use bathroom. Kumar, if you have to use bathroom more, feel free, and then we will be moving on. When you are facing...